All right, here we are on April 7th. I got my friend Curtis from Heartland Deer Management Services. We're gonna take a spin around the property and see what he thinks. He's doing this stuff uh, part-time on a side business, is very good at it. So we're gonna have him take a look and see what he thinks. What do you think, Curtis? So far, so good of what I've seen. And we'll take a tour around your property and see what you got, see what kind of setup you got there. And See what improvements we can make and what you got already. All right, looking forward to it. And I'm going to put Curtis's information on uh, on the description here in the video for anyone in southern Illinois. Um, he's a good man. I can guarantee his work. He's one of the guys you know you can rely on here. So looking forward to it. Let's go take another spin. Right, we are out in the plot that was my nightmare plot last year that I blew up several times. And Curtis had some pretty good ideas. Well, I, I think on this plot, being somewhat on the hillside, you probably need to, since we see some uh, weeds already coming up, go ahead, kill them off, uh, rework it, get some more lime and fertilizer according to the soil test, and work that in with the disc, and come back and uh, cold pack the, the soil to get a good, nice, firm seabed and go ahead and broadcast some probably this time of year first of april go ahead and broadcast some spring oats then add your clover and chicory mix on top of that then go ahead and call the packet again uh, planting the oats this time of year will help reduce the weed competition and see i never a little bit more moisture for your, your clovers and, and chicory and that's real important especially in the early spring planting because Another couple of weeks, more of the weeds will really start to take off the broad leaves. And uh, so it's really important to add some kind of cover crop, nurse crop, like wheat or oats. And to See, that. I've never done that in the spring. So that's, uh, that's a dang good point. I mean, I obviously know about the weeds. I replanted some of these five times last year and couldn't get them to take. So I, I guess uh, I definitely mix in, uh, like I said, some spring oats or even some, even some wheat, and they'll provide kind of a double attraction for the spring and the summer until the the small grain crops seed out. Then that should give enough moisture and enough reduced wheat competition for your clovers once they get established. And go ahead and and, and bush hog it or cut it real high, mm -hmm. six to eight inches. Uh, once the clover get up that high, just go ahead and right before they start right when they start to flower or just a little bit before if you notice it go ahead and cut the tops off of them mm -hmm. and you, you don't want to cut it any lower than that because they're in the risk of burning it up during the summer months when the temps get hot okay well i know you got a kubota but hop on the coyote let's get started let's man go. <laughs> <laughs> all right we are back at my original original micro plot with the nice big water and hole down there and me and curtis are taking a look here and he pointed out something. Which way do you think they would travel, Curtis? Well, from here, you got a ridge over here. You got the start of the valley that, that's running south here. And you got this ridge line back here. So a lot of them deer, you know, like to, to use the ridge line, especially the bucks. And the way you got your stand set up here, I think will be perfect because they're, like you said, like you told me earlier, they they follow that ridge line right down yep. to your your new food plot. That's nice and secluded. This See, that's hole. interesting because I knew where they were coming from based on my cameras and my intel, but I didn't necessarily know why. Yeah. And what well, you're you got, saying makes you sense. Got this valley here, and you, you got a ridge running down this way, and the predominant ridge running running down here. So it's you know the line of travel for deer. They like to use them ridge lines. And you got a perfect funnel right to your, your stand location here in your, your micro food plot. Nice. Well, good. I'm looking forward to a better year then. Let me just show you guys which plot we're on here quick. And you'll recognize it. This was the Hail Mary plot that I had to fry last fall. Because, again, I couldn't get clover to grow. Uh, but now... Clover's coming up from last fall, and I just overseeded it with Curtis's secret mix. Yeah, I definitely think this is a good pinch point. Pinch point, uh, a funnel and a pinch point right, right here where you got your stand. So I, yeah. I think it's. Well, I'm in the right spot now. It's just a matter of time. A little more improvements and some more QDMA. I think in a couple years you're going to have some big ones living on your property here. 
All right, man. I hope to be able to save this video and bring it back up when I got hope 150 so. <laughs> inch hair. We're looking at one of my hinge cuts, and Curtis had a couple of good points. I was making the hinge cuts high. Like you look at some of these, they're six, five, six, seven feet because I thought the deer bed under them, but he brought up a good point. Basically, it's better to cut belly high or just a little bit lower because the main function of hinge cutting, of course, you want some more light and create more more cover for them. But if you cut it lower, it's going to create more side cover, and that's what you want, more side cover. Don't worry about too much of the canopy and deer going up under... Uh, wanting to bed under a canopy. They're, they're more interested in being hidden from their predators. And so side cover is definitely the way to go. So you want to cut them, you know, cut them belly high or just a, just, just a hair lower. Okay. And I'm, I'm cutting me and you are kind of tall, so. Yeah. But uh, you, you want to keep it belly high or, or just a little bit lower for anyone. So that, that's going to create more side cover. And of course, browse. It's going to be, if you cut them up high, there's only going to be a little bit towards the end where they're going to be able to get the browse. Oh, I see. Yep. So the, the lower you got the browse, you got more daytime, uh, more daytime feeding. Yeah, that's I didn't think, even think of the browse like them high ones I got. Yeah, like you said, they ain't going to get so the browse. Not, they're not going to get to them. So if you keep it, like I said, belly high or, or look just a little bit lower, that tree's going to, going to split and fall right here. So they it creates more natural okay. browse for them yeah. at yeah. at their level. And also a side cover. Did you bring your chainsaw and yes, boots? I did. I'm ready to go. You ready to roll? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Got some of Curtis's miracle mix, clover chicory mix. We're gonna throw down. Yeah. Got some buckhorn, buckhorn wildlife seed. This is the clover blend with chicory. Nice. Now drought hardy chicory. What was that first part? Five clovers? Five different clovers. I mixed two, two perennial clovers with it and uh, take that three perennial clovers and two annual clovers. And the annual clovers go a little bit quicker and it kind of acts as a, a nice nurse or cover crop for the slower growing perennials because the perennials will uh, port more energy at first of growing the root system. Because the annual is only a, usually a one year clover but they can reseed themselves. But this mix contains uh, a bursium clover, a crimson clover, two types of a dino clover, and a good three-year hardy red clover, and with some Maduro chicory mixed in with it. So. Sweet. All right. All right, man. Let's get some down. Let's All right. He's overseeding the uh, perimeter of uh, fall plot mix that I had from the fall and we're hoping that the clover will establish so it could be a more permanent uh, strip of clover there all the way around the perimeter for this tower this is fun stuff ain't it A little cubby hole right here. This is his ninja special hand seed method, guaranteed to grow. I'm digging it. to give that one a push man she don't want to go what's oh, stuck on that skinny one underneath it huh <laughs>
Heartland Deer Management Services. I like that. All right, man, we had a heck of a day. Yes, we did. We got a lot of hitch cutting done and took a tour of your property. Now, I have a guarantee of 150 inch deer this fall, right? Well, no guarantees on nothing. <laughs> a better chance of it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's better than nothing, man. Excellent, man. We had a good day. I appreciate you coming out, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. You guys make sure to check out my website, www.heartlanddeermanagement.com. And you can find my buckhorn wildlife seed on there, too. So, All right. And let me tell you, he's shown me some pictures of bucks that a couple of his clients have killed. And I'm more than envious. Let's put it that way. Good work. All right. Nice spend the day with you, Joe. All right, man. Thanks, buddy.